Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so, so much for joining me. Now listen, today we're gonna talk, <laughs> not in any kind of like drama way, commentary, anything like that. I just wanna, I just wanna send my thoughts out into the world here because this is a topic that I have been, and you all know, <laughs> I have been passionate about since day one, day one of the TikTok beauty industry, let's say, happening. There has always been, in my mind, a very deep concern, a very deep, like, fuck's sake, you know, in, in my head about this thing. So I just want to talk, I just want to send out a message, and you know some of you have been in my inboxes asking me what I think about certain situations. So here's what's going to happen, we're going to talk today. So <laughs> I'm also going to be doing my face with a few pro um, products, and I will put them in, um, oh, on the YouTube shopping thing. You may see there's a new feature on YouTube where I can add what products I'm using in the video to like a thing. None of those are affiliate links, just so you know. Okay, so let me just start off by saying this. <laughs> many, many, many of you, I'm just gonna be 100% honest, have asked me what I think about the whole Michaela situation. Let's be real, I, we can't, we can't just ignore it. I can't just ignore how many of you have asked, I don't, and I don't want to appear to be um, turning a blind eye to it as somebody who reacts to things that are less than truthful online. I'm gonna tell you this, was it a mistake? 100% absolutely. Does false advertising make my blood boil? Yes, I'm gonna talk about that today. However, is Michaela a horrible person? No. Is she the worst person ever for for doing this? Absolutely not. It was a stupid, stupid thing to do. A hundred percent. I don't deny that. She probably doesn't even deny that. But let's hope it's a lesson learned. Michaela has the ability to create incredible content. That's why she is where she is, right? And when I reacted to her, I made a reaction to a video to her years ago, and I adored her content because I was I was hating TikTok content. And then I saw this makeup artist who was doing incredible educational content, but making it go viral and making it entertaining. And I think that slipped away a little bit. So it would be great to see that come back. It's extremely disappointing. Of course it is. Like, um, you've seen people say things, you know, how disappointed they are, how it makes everyone else look. That's that. That's how it is. But I want to talk today about the whole of TikTok beauty. I'm talking about big creators. I'm talking about small creators. I'm talking about people trying to become those big creators. Okay, let's start talking about my concerns when I look through beauty TikTok, right? Why, why, why am I making this video? <laughs> I kind of want people to see this from somebody who works in social media, whether they are an influencer, whether they are in marketing, whether they're um, influencer management. I want people to see all the things that we see on this side that maybe you don't as people who consume content that kind of make things a little bit more like, ah, oh, that, that makes sense. I can see that now. So let's start off with ads and advertising. So this is my kind of message to TikTok beauty TikTokers, as I say, beauty YouTubers, who do ads and don't disclose them. One, that's um, against advertising rules. <laughs> you have to. And I know the rules are really strict in the UK. Like, we literally have to or we are in a lot of trouble. We have to disclose everything, whether it was gifted, sponsored, um, an ad, which is the same thing, despite people saying it's not. It's, a, it's the same. Here's how ads work in my mind, right? Not how they work, but how they should work. And why you shouldn't hide them from your following, the people who support you, the people who have put you in the position you are in right now to be able to accept ads, right? When you are taking an ad as an influencer, you should like the product already, or you should ask for the product to be gifted to you and then try it and be like, yes, no, later on down the road. It should then, in turn, be your absolute pleasure to speak about this product, this company, this brand, whether it be makeup, a phone game, um, an add-on to, like, Google Chrome, whatever it is you're advertising, you should be so happy with this product and that that brand and company want to work with you that you are sharing it with your followers. They are the people who gave you this job technically, right? So say for example, what's a brand I really like? Tatcha, I'm on Tatcha's PR list, so everything you see from them, unless I bought it myself, always says gifted. But say they reached out to me and wanted to do an ad with me, right? 
I love them. Now, even thinking about it makes me like, oh my God. <laughs> I love them. So if they reached out to me and was like, Robert, we love your content. We would love to work with you. I would be like, oh my God, I use your thing every day. Like this is my third one. I would absolutely love to. In turn, with my followers, I'm gonna like, everyone, listen. <laughs> Tatcha, a brand that I absolutely love, adore, use them every day. You know, you've seen me use them in your videos. I can't believe I'm saying this. This is an ad with Tatcha. I am so happy to be sharing that with you. You know what I mean? Like, if that, if that's the kind of thing you, you want to be. <laughs> You're excited. You should be excited, but I think it's unfortunate that ads and sponsorships have become so commonplace that, it, that you expect it. You expect people to reach out to you and, and be like, you know, I want to work with you. I want to do this. I want to do that. You shouldn't be hiding your sponsorships. Something something partner flashing up on the screen in the smallest text for five seconds is not disclosing your sponsorship. Having to press more and see underneath is not disclosing your ad. Hashtag ad is disclosing your ad. Saying this is an ad is disclosing your ad. Your audience are fine with you taking ads if you are honest about it they will be fine with it. When I see creators that I followed for a while, maybe they're a little bit of a smaller creator, get an ad. I don't care if it's for fucking HelloFresh or <laughs> NordVPN. No, I'm not sponsored by any of these people, by the way. I am happy to see that achievement. A brand wants to work with a creator you follow. How exciting for everyone to see this person growing. When it gets annoying is when you don't disclose it because that's pure dishonesty. It's also against advertising guidelines. Something else I've kind of heard is that people are kind of comparing like what's happening now to like the early days of YouTube. You know when like people wouldn't disclose sponsorships or do all this kind of stuff. I think it, it might be a little bit worse on TikTok. Here's why, hear me out. On YouTube, we have like AdSense to fall back on. It's different for everyone, but my income isn't um, reliant on sponsorships. I can go months without doing a sponsorship and be absolutely fine because I have YouTube AdSense to fall back on. I also have Facebook, which is a great source of income, and um, Snapchat, these platforms that people think are dead are actually the highest paying. So when you, I don't, I mean, I don't get any money from TikTok and people have shown how much money they get from TikTok and it's hardly anything. So these people who only do TikTok, as great as it is at, for reaching an audience and making an audience, um, although, you know, the following, like, in my eyes, 10 million followers is the equivalent to, like, 100,000, <laughs> you know, like, it's on YouTube. It, it's, it's a little bit different in my eyes. On TikTok, you don't have an income, a great income from TikTok. You're almost reliant on sponsorships, because where else is your money going to come from? Unless they're sitting there doing TikTok lives, like, those people that do it for, like, 20 hours a day. But you most definitely can't rely on it. So, if you're not making money through advertise for, from like AdSense, you know, where we don't advertise a product, it's just the adverts before a YouTube video. You're kind of reliant on these sponsorships and that's all you're gonna do to make money. And then it does come out as dishonest because you can be advertising, I mean, you, you can advertise a product every single day if you wanted to. And I could do the same for every single product that I actually use, but it does come off as dishonest. Everybody wants your real opinion. Sponsorships, Advertisements, same thing, are taboo because people make it that way. They don't reveal them. So it seems as like something shady when it's really not. And you know what? Yes, it might be an unpopular thing in terms of algorithm. If you see ad in the title, I'll say it. And now my videos that say ad in the title don't perform as well, um, even though it's a product I like, even though it's something that I like, but you're getting the money from the sponsorship anyway. It borderlines on greedy when <laughs> when you're not disclosing ads, because what else haven't you disclosed? What other ads haven't you disclosed? What products are people buying from you? So that's, it. that's what I'm gonna say for advertising. It wouldn't be such a taboo subject if people stopped hiding it. Just say it's a sponsored one. Be happy to work with a brand, because you should be happy to work with a brand, because you've chose that sponsorship. Do you really like the product? because that's what you should be doing. And also, let's not think you're fooling anyone. <laughs> We've seen this happen. It is, you, history is repeating itself slightly. We saw this, sorry, I'm clicking this foundation. We saw this on YouTube years ago. We saw it, people linking Amazon links, acting like we didn't know it was affiliate links. People aren't stupid. People are not stupid. Well, okay, let's talk about <laughs> the filters. Let's talk about filters. You know, I always talk about the quality of like camera quality. 
but it baffles me, absolutely ruins my mind, how people can't look at someone's skin on TikTok and, and be like, that's not what skin looks like. They, they're like, oh, it looks great, uh, but you can't see it. You can't see the skin. Whose skin have you, in when you look, look at TikTok, right? Apart from most people that somehow get that incredible, incredible quality, I don't know how we do it. When have you looked at someone's skin and be like, yeah, that's what skin looks like in real life? A hundred percent. TikTok, where, whether or not you upload in 4K, does something to videos where it looks like you filmed it on a video camera from the 90s. Like we have gone back in time when it comes to the quality of um, content that we upload onto the internet. It doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. And brands take these, brands take this quality and then use it as their advertisements. It's like, oh my God, I really think it's time to step it up. If you're, re if you're reviewing beauty products on TikTok and you have a following and you're then getting paid to make content, here's how I view it, right? The money that I make from YouTube, not all of it, goes back into making sure the videos are the best quality they can be. Because one, that's how you make your money, first of all, but you're investing in, you're doing it for the people who follow you. You're doing it for the people that watch your content. You want them to have good quality content to watch. You want them to look at your video to think, yeah, this is the best that they can give right now. And it's great. But even sitting in front of a fucking window is better than, you know, having to put like a million filters on your video, running it through Instagram and putting a filter on it and then coming back to TikTok and uploading it. Whatever it is people are doing. And you know what? Maybe it is time to start editing those TikToks on your computer from a good quality camera. If you're being, again, if you're making money from it, if you can invest into it, we're talking influencers here, not just anyone starting out. Get yourself a, a camera, set it up, download Final Cut Pro, <laughs> and start editing those TikToks so they're high, high quality, so people can trust you, so people can see what's really happening with your skin. Or, it's simple, use the, the what's it called, not the front-facing camera on your phone, the back-facing camera. You can mirror your phone onto an iPad or onto a, um, laptop. That's actually probably cheaper than buying a good camera, to be fair. But all these things are just like, if TikTok is gonna be the place now where people get their makeup information, which actually fills me with dread, then invest some money back into your followers. Invest some money back into your quality. That's like a whole, that's a whole thing, but that just pisses me off. Let's talk about going viral on TikTok, right? Which I think is a thing that a lot of people have made their kind of career off. I mean, for example, that, I always forget her name, that girl that shoves loads of foundation on her face and is like, this is definitely how I do my foundation. We all know, we all know it's not. Let's talk about longevity of going viral on TikTok, right? Gone are the days when you will go viral on YouTube um, somewhere and that will make you suddenly a whole career. People can go viral on TikTok and nothing happen. They get a few followers, but then what? Now what? So let's talk about people that do like stupid things to, to go viral, stupid ways of applying makeup. You may have a lot of following. Let's say you're lucky enough to have millions and millions of followers because of that. No one takes you seriously though. And as soon as you fuck up, everybody will go against you. And again, I wanna use this um, example of Michaela. And I actually think this is a little bit unprofessional. They put a picture of Michaela from a brand, from a, advertisement that they did with her in store. They took the um, advertisement, changed what she was holding to a false pair of lashes, put the lashes down and the telescopic mascara. That to me is, is, is shady. It's really, that's quite brutal, I think. And other companies, Ardell for example, have done this. Ardell, both two brands are probably sending Michaela PR, wishing that she posted it on her thing to get some advertisement, to get some like the next viral thing. As soon as something, as soon as Michaela does something wrong, they twist around and now they're on everyone else's side. Brands aren't your friends forever. <laughs> they're never gonna be your friends. And this is why you shouldn't treat them like they are. This is why I'm off so many PR lists. This is why people who like, <laughs> I, there were people that I used to speak to on Instagram who are like, PR for something brand, and as soon as I, I say something horrible about their brand, never hear from them again, ever. As soon as I say I don't like one product from their brand, you know, even if I like the rest, never hear from it, them again. Brands aren't your friends, that you're not in this group together. You, you're not higher than brands. They will switch on you instantly. <laughs> it's not, we've seen it. So if you're doing something really stupid, going viral because you're using testers in store to do a whole face of makeup, smudging it all over your face and rubbing it in, eating it, all that shit, 
People don't take you serious. I'm telling you now, people do not take you seriously. They may be giving you PR, gifting you all this, gifting you this. As soon as you do something wrong or appear wrong, or as soon as, as soon as there's this mob mentality of not liking you, brands will be on that side of a mob mentality because they're not going to stand by you and be like, oh yeah, they'll buy all our stuff. No, the audience are going to buy all the people. The mob is the people who buy all their stuff. Go, if you want to be an influencer, it's fine. It's a great career as much as people like put it down. It's a great career to go into, but don't go into it with this thing in mind that you're going to try and go viral by doing something stupid because in, ter in terms of longevity, you're going to be known as that person who does things. This. There's always people side eyeing you. There's always people, and I know because I've spoken to people, <laughs> there's always going to be people that are just going to wait for your downfall and then you're kind of like not taking it seriously anymore. Maybe you're still successful, maybe you're still doing work, whatever, but not as much as you used to. That's life. That's life. So if you're going to go into influencering, <laughs> go in with integrity, or not doing something stupid, not doing something that can be being honest, just being a regular fucking person is fine. And this is another thing you see it in ads. If you see it like a foundation brand, for example, sharing, um, a TikTok of somebody who's used their foundation and says they love it. Look, you look through all the comments and not a single positive one about this person. It's, it's really, it's really strange, really strange. One thing I also wanna um, touch on, I don't know what I'm gonna do with my makeup. So one thing I wanna talk about is the ability for anyone to be able to sell anything on TikTok. And here's why to me, this is a little bit of an issue. Not that I think, no one should be able, able to have like affiliate links. Like everyone can do that. But it leads to this thing of everyone lying and making shit up, right? You know me, I hate those powders where everyone's like, oh my God, it's an alternative for um, filler. It's, like, it's not, it's ridiculous. But it means that everybody latches onto the same thing. They, like you can scroll through TikTok, right? Do this experiment, scroll through TikTok. When you see somebody saying something and they're like, I linked it in a TikTok shop click on it and then don't buy it and then just go back and then see how many more advertisements you get for that one product over and over and over again. There's so much misinformation on TikTok, not just about makeup, I'm talking everything, nutrition, health, um, even like dog training. There's so much misinformation that is then broken down by professionals that it's alarming. It's like we're, we're raising this like, this like generation of people who, it's not a generational thing, sorry. It's like a group of people that get all their information from TikTok. And it's like, that's not, it's not true. It's, it's really dangerous in some forms. I don't mean to be rude, but in some cases it's making people a little bit stupid. Like people don't use like rational thinking. Like some things you look at on TikTok and then being somebody who likes to, you know, inform myself, I will Google it and have a little look around and look on more platforms and see that actually that information I've just consumed isn't real, it's not true, it's all bullshit. But then you'll see people in the comments being like, wow, I can't believe this, I can't, you know, I love this. We need to get to this point where we're not just focusing on makeup content creators and saying, you're lying, you're lying. So many people online are lying to everyone and it's not normal and it's not correct and it's not good to do. Not just makeup, in all forms, in all forms. Something needs to change, something needs to give, some people need to start reporting people to the FTC, P th <laughs> things need to start happening because it's becoming scary and worrying. You know what, I dread to think like the people who just, you know, their f one of their first social media platforms is TikTok. I dread to think what their, mind is going to be like. They're going to think their skin has to look, you know, completely smooth with no pores and no texture, even though nobody's skin looks like that. They're not going to be able to see filters. <laughs> Just be wary of the content you're consuming and do research, you know, don't be one of those people who, whose form, who get all their news and, um, what's it called, sources from like Facebook or TikTok. Because as soon as somebody says to me, oh, I saw on TikTok, I switch off. I'm like, I can't, I can't listen to you talk about TikTok out like it's fact. Because I don't trust people. <laughs> That's what TikTok's done to me. <laughs> TikTok is an extremely problematic platform in many ways. And I don't think it's just the, the beauty community on there. I think it's more than that. I think it's that, pl that platform 
is built on dishonesty. I'll be honest. You have people that do shit to go viral. In some circumstances, they do racist things to go viral. They do things that are extremely problematic to go viral. It needs, it needs sorting out. If that platform needs sorting out. I'm just gonna finish this makeup look and then um, outro for you guys because I don't really have much else to say. Okay, so this is my finished look. Let me finish up this video by saying, my message to the TikTok beauty, if this looks blue by the way, it's because I just tried a blue powder for a TikTok. Um, my message to the TikTok beauty community, stop, just stop. <laughs> stop for one second, take a step back, reevaluate everything you've been doing. Be honest, be truthful, which is the same thing. Be transparent. You might be having a great time right now, but remember longevity of your career, that trust, that just being a normal person is gonna take you a lot further than trying to be something else. Also, no one wants to see your designer shit. <laughs> Ooh, okay, well, thank you so much for joining me on that little rant. I needed to get that out into the world. This is so blue. I cannot believe how blue this is. I'm gonna need to take this oath with me right now, right? I'm done, I'm done, I'm done with that. That's the past now. This whole thing is the past. It's happened, it's done, moving on, moving forward. I don't wanna hear about it again. I'm gonna be more wary on TikTok and that's it. Okay, all right, that was the oath. Thanks again for joining me. Do consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up and I will see you very, very soon.